Salt, one of the most amazing enchantment materials in the forged knife competition, has always been a favorite of all the gods and judges. After all, the melting point of salt happened to be the optimal standard 801 degrees required for quenching. Therefore, when it melts in, it happens to be the perfect time to quench a top-notch divine weapon. What's even more amazing is that the show team overturned more than 100 tents overnight and borrowed hundreds of high-carbon steel nails to use as the material for the contestants' forged knives. The forging requires the contestants to cut a couple of hammer handles to create a symbol. An adorned back tooth machete, the length of the hammer blade must also be controlled between 2,833 centimeters with a one-piece root and a second wheel before the blade must be finished within 2,025 centimeters of the Baxerations. Goodness gracious, a steel spike hammer machete, this is really exciting. So, after Mario got the steel nail, he first put it into the metal con and measured it. Then according to the concise, cut off the excess material and prepared the whole tin con dama. And, before filling the cans, he also used acetone to thoroughly clean the inside of the steel nails, so that the pure and unadulterated steel embryo can be forged in the first time. Luigi, although he has not participated in the box force, is also ready to come on a can of steel powder. That said, these contestants are the ultimate fans of forging competitions and understand the importance of tapping to even out the inner layer of steel powder after loading it. After all, a boxed steel blank with no gaps is the only way to hammer a good, hard knife with no air bubbles. The reason why Daisy chose to hammer boxers is that, in addition to her confidence in her own technique, more importantly, she has a deep understanding of the essence of boxers that are polished and stripped of their kins. Daisy says that in addition to her daily ironing, she is a full-time mom with two kids. Is she here to compete today to prove that ironing girls are equally professional? So far, it seems that only Bowser applies a layer of isolation fluid before filling the cans. Mainly in his opinion, the thick steel blanks that are forged with the can with the belt are bound to be less direct than the speed that comes from stripping the can and hammering directly. So the question is, if he can get the skin off the can, what should he do? You know, no liquid Mario has already started on the machine. Calcin molten steel embryo, not to mention, three consecutive reciprocating forging. The results are very good, especially on the third forging. He felt the firmness of the steel embryo. It was time to hammer a handsome knife to prove himself. One hour later, Daisy red hot the tin cans and started forging and fusing on the machine. Unlike Mario next door, her temperature doesn't seem to be too hot, but Daisy understands the importance of continuous heating and forging, so the extension effect is not too bad. Luigi, on the other hand, wiped the top to test the fusion after fusing the steel blanks, and the results were very good, and it was also possible to lengthen the forging blade securely. After only the liquid coated Bowser fused the tin, he began to grind it in preparation for stripping, at a decent rate, that is, hammering and chiseling, and hammered it for 40 minutes or so before he got the whole piece of boxcar steel embryo down. Man, that's a lot of time to sharpen to knives. After all, Mario, who has been working on the canless cans, had already extended the blade to standard size. A few more waves of tweaking and he'll be ready for the critical hardening. In the last hour, Daisy's hands were up and down, and she hammered out a large knife blank with amazing arm strength. Next, she's ready to get on the machine to adjust for imperfections and sharpen the back serrations to the standard of the sample knife. This forging knife speed is really fast, it's just that the judges' brothers were very appreciative of it. Luigi sprinkles a secret weapon, salt, on the back of the knife to determine the best time to quench it, using the melting point of the salt as a guide. After all, when the salt melts, it also means that the knife temperature is 801 degrees, so it can be inserted into the oil for quenching. Sure enough, the results were as excellent as he expected. Bowser was the second to harden his blade, and he did so at a good pace and with good hardness. Mario was right behind him, with a few minor imperfections that should not be a problem with a little polishing. Daisy is the last to harden her blade, which is also straight and hard. Time is up. The first round is over. The four masters were treated to their first round of audits with box with machetes forged with high-strength steel spikes. First up was Bowser's dorsal tooth machete which had a decent finish to the blade shape, just a little bit of minor delamination at the tip that needs to be taken care of. Next up was Luigi's machete, which Seven liked the design of, but the slightly thicker blade needs to be sharpened and reduced in weight. Mario's machete has a nice shape and forging, but it would have been better without the bend in the back of the blade. Last but not least, Daisy's machete has a very distinctive machete design, and would be perfect if it could be sharpened and reduced in weight. At the end of the critique, the judges decided to eliminate Bowser whose knife was the only one with a structural problem of minor delamination. The remaining three contestants advanced to the second round to continue forging their knives. Several contestants in this round, in addition to adjusting flaws, had to make knife handles from these burnt stakes and assemble them. And, by the end of the round, the total weight of the blade cannot exceed 680 grams. Good lord, is that sick? 
Luigi's knife was weighed at 1.3 kilograms, which is nearly 100 grams higher than the required weight. Right now, he can only get on the machine to polish it, and Daisy's knife is even more 1.8 kilograms. This frame are enough to hammer out three knives. So, how to lose weight and slim down will be her top priority. Mario is not even weighed directly on the machine to start grinding. After all, they didn't make any adjustments to their knives during the first round, so it's not too late to sharpen them before weighing them. In the last hour, Luigi, who had finished sharpening the knife, was the first to straighten a piece of burnt wood, cut out the rough shape of the handle, and put on the brass nails, and finished the assembly of the handle with glue. Now all he had to do was make the blade serrated and he was done. After an hour of sharpening, Daisy realized that she still had 900 grams left. Time is running out, so she's going to put the handle on first and then reduce the weight. Mario, on the other hand, corrected the blade's curvature with a risky and rewarding hand-breaking technique. Although his judges were alarmed, he was finally able to move on to assembling the hilt and doing the final finishing touches. Time was up and the second round of challenges was over. First up was the Nielsen stick-cutting strength test, where Luigi's back tooth, machete came to be weighed on the Nielsen and was found to pass at 650 to grams. There were no obvious problems with the blade after the strength test either. Next up was Mario's back tooth, machete, at 480 to grams, which was more than enough to pass the weight test. The handle wasn't great, but it survived the strength test. Last but not least was Daisy's back tooth machete. Nielsen waited and realized that things were really something. The 1.02 kilograms was a little over half a pound. The result is clear. Daisy's overweight contestant can't go home and raise her kids. We can only say that the program's second round of this requirement is really too much. In the end, Mario and Luigi made it to the third final round. The two will go home and hammer Nabul Parang knives to split the difference. Originating in 18th century Malaysia, the Nabul Parang knife is very similar to the modern machete, with a slightly curved blade with a slightly wider point at the top. The knife was ideal for survival in the field and for sweeping away enemies in battle. In fact, this knife has also been used in the same way as our war knives to send away countless enemies. So the blades hammered by the two men must also have a curved blade of 50-56 centimeters or less, with a stirrup-shaped handguard and a thin waist-shaped handle with a rounded tip. Four days later, the contestants return with their blades for the ultimate test, and the winner is the current tournament champion. So Luigi goes home and sets the furnace on fire to burn the finished steel. For him, maintaining the curvature of the blade will be the most important part of his hammer swing, and using the finished steel will make his work more efficient. Mario, on the other hand, found steel and prepared to stack it to 100-story trapezoidal dama. It's good to see that the steel is of the finest quality from the coal furnace, and the forging results are quite good. But at the end of the day, he hadn't yet hammered out a blade. The next day, Luigi heated up the blade and finished the critical hardening and the blade was straight and hard enough to be cut into soft steel to start making accessories. Mario hammered out the blade and then cut a modified version of the trapezoidal Damascus. He then hammered out the shape of the blade, which was also hardened and hardened to his satisfaction. On the last day, Luigi drilled the material for the handle, assembled and adjusted it, and then spent two hours shaping it in order to make the most comfortable and top quality handle, especially with a smooth cut. Mario also came to the finishing stage of the handle guard, and he refined the position of the handle to prevent it from hurting Seven's little hand. Four days later, the two returned to the ring with their knives. The Lewis-class Parang knife is forged from 80CRV to steel and has a handle made of fronted wood. Mario's Parang knife is forged from trapezoidal Damascus steel with three types of steel overlapping, and the handle is made of red hardwood. The two handsome knives have their own styles, so which one is more powerful? First up is the 7 hacking dummy in a real world test. The Lewis grade handsome knife comes first. The balance and feel are excellent, and the combat effect is great. Next is Mario's awesome knife. Mario's knife is a little pinched in his hand, but he has no problem cutting the dummy. The second round was a strength test of Corky's peach con chopping. Luigi's knife had no problems at all, so to speak, Mario's knife was also intact. Finally, there was 7's sharpest test for chopping pumpkins. Luigi's knife is quite strong with one cut. Mario's knife also had no problem chopping vegetables. At the end of the three rounds of tests, after the judge's discussion, the winner of this period is Luigi. Mario's knife was equally good, but unfortunately, the handguard pinched his hand, which was his point of failure. Let's just say he didn't have enough handle detail on this one. Congratulations to Luigi on his win.